Hello, in this video, we will see why the Excel pros use the aggregate function of Excel. We are going to look at four different examples of the use of aggregate, and these examples will focus on the key strengths of the aggregate function, and these are that it can handle 19 different Excel functions. The other big positive of the aggregate function is that it can ignore errors, hidden rows, and subtotals. So let's get into it. Now in this first example, let's start with a basic but brilliant use of aggregate. And this is straight out of the box what its primary use is. Now the aggregate function is a successor to the subtotal function. And aggregate takes on the baton from there. And this example focuses on the aspect of aggregate. At the moment, I have some functions in the subtotal cells. In cell C15, I've written a formula which works. And this is how most people would probably achieve this but it simply sums those specific cells. And that's not wrong, but it's a little bit awkward, a little bit fragile. A better solution is we replace the sum function completely with aggregate. So my sum functions have gone. Let's put aggregate in cell C6. So if I start with this aggregate function, and here's that initial prompt for the 19 different functions that aggregate can handle. How awesome is that? Now, right now I want to sum. So I'm going to choose the sum aspect of it, which is index value nine from that list. I'll put in a comma, and now it's asking me if I want to ignore error values, hidden rows, subtotals. And this is another key strength of aggregate. But right now, I don't actually have any interest in this question. So I'm going to put a comma and just bypass it. Next up is the array. Now, right now, that's this range of cells. And I don't need that case value because that is when you're using functions like large, small, and others. Right now, I can close the bracket, press enter, and this is working like a standard sum. But I'm using this so that when we get to the grand total, I can ignore these subtotals. I can't ignore some functions, but I can ignore aggregate functions. So let's speed ahead, and I'll replace these other sums with our aggregate. Okay, so the aggregate functions are in. Let's do the grand total equals aggregate. I would like a sum again, but now for the options. This time I'm going to choose option three. I'm going to ask it to ignore the hidden rows, the errors, and most importantly, any nested, subtotal, or aggregate functions. So I cannot ignore the sum from before, but I can ignore aggregate, and that is why we've replaced our sum with that function. So if I choose option three, let's grab the entire array. And if I run this aggregate function, we have the same result as before. But rather than going to the hassle of clicking individual specific cells, especially if there's a lot more than three, I revamped my spreadsheet with aggregate and I can simply ask it to sum the whole range, knowing it will ignore those subtotals. We know that another strength of aggregate is that it can ignore hidden rows, aka filtered rows. Now we can filter rows by using the traditional filter, but the best filter in Excel is a slicer. And this data on screen is formatted as a table named TBL refunds, and that means that we can use a slicer on it. So let's start by inserting a slicer for the region column. If I click within my table and pop to insert and slicer, 
and I'll ask for one for the region column. Just going to quickly tidy this up. I'm going to click on a style of this one here. Then I'm going to increase it to four columns so that I get a horizontal layout of my regions. And with a bit of resizing and positioning, I can slip it in this nice spot here that I have pre-prepared. And if I click on my options, it is slicing my table. But I want the sum function to take advantage of that filter. And a normal sum will sum all of the hidden rows as well. Let me clear this slicer to start with. And in cell G2, it's time for the aggregate function. And I will use it for a sum. Other examples come in very soon. So index nine again. But then for the options, this time I'm going to choose option five. So previously it was option three. We could happily do that again, but for no real powerful reason, just to change it up a bit, I'm going to choose option five and say, look, just the hidden rows to ignore. And then for the array, I will select my table column of the refund amount. So TBL refunds, refund amount. This will return my sum of the refund amount column. But if I click on the options in my slicer, I can see that that total is changing. So it's only summing the refund amounts for those visible rows. Being a slicer, I can easily choose more than one option by holding my control key and I could have Guildford and Manchester and I can easily clear it with the X in the corner. Slicers and aggregate together, fantastic. Now, because the aggregate function can handle 19 different functions, I thought, wouldn't it be cool if a user could select from a list the function they want to use and still sync it with this slicer to only aggregate the visible rows. Now in cell F4, I've set this up with a little drop down list and I've only got the options of sum, average and max here for demo purposes, but you can include whichever ones of those 19 functions you like. And this is a table named TBL function list, which has the name of that function and then the index number related to it. So we know that nine is for a sum, one is average and four is max. And I'm just going to use a quick X lookup to return the index number for the matched function. So here we go, cell G4, it's aggregate function. So I'm gonna pop in an X lookup here, X lookup. And for the lookup value, that will be the value in F4. For the lookup array, that will be TBL function list and to look down the name of the functions. And then for the return array, that will be TBL function list and then the number. So this is my X lookup. It's going to return the function list number after matching the function name. We're back in aggregate at this point. I'm going to choose option five to ignore hidden rows only. And then when it comes to the array, I'm going to use the TBL refunds table and the refund amount column, which I could have selected like I did before. And with this in, we get the same total as above, but that's because it says sum in F4. If I change that to a max, then I'll get a max refund amount. And if I change it to an average, the average refund amount. And this is using my slicer, isn't it? See, if I choose Swindon, then the average in Swindon for refunds is 120, and I can change that to max, or indeed to sum, and it's also working with my slicer. So absolutely brilliant, I've managed to sync my aggregate function with a drop-down list selector so that a user can specify the aggregation they want out of the 19 possible options and I gave them a reduced choice of three. 
For our fourth and final example, the aggregate function is also the key to unlocking any formula to be able to work with slices. So we know that functions like sum and count ifs and sum ifs, they will always include the hidden rows. But if we can utilize aggregate to unlock the door, any other formula can then have the potential to ignore those hidden rows, which is brilliant when working off a slicer. So how do we do this? First of all, we want to include a new column to our table as a flag to identify whether it is a hidden row or not. So I'm going to add this to my table now and I'll call it include. And I'll use the aggregate function. And I'm going to use it with option two, the count function. And I'm going to use it with option five to ignore the hidden rows like the previous examples. And for the array, I'm going to specify the use of the refund amount. But it doesn't matter to a great deal as long as it's able to count it. And refund amount being numeric, there's no problem there. Now, I do want to just add an at sign actually for this refund amount. I've accidentally selected the column, but I want to ensure it's only on this row. So I should have selected just D7, but the at symbol applies that context. So I'll add that in, press enter. And what this will do is simply return one for everything at the moment, because all of them are visible and it can see refund amount once in this row, which makes sense and almost feels a little bit silly. But remember with this function, I specified option five, so it will ignore a hidden row. So if I was to use my slicer right now and click on Manchester, that will obviously reduce the size of my table and I can see the number ones there visible, but what I can't see, because they're hidden, they're filtered out of it, is that all other rows, all hidden rows, are displaying zero. And I can prove that, because if I choose a different function at the moment, a different cell, I meant, I could use a normal sum function and tell it to sum all of the values from the include column, remember sum, sums the hidden rows as well. But I get the answer of 10. So even though sum is sum in the hidden rows, the fact that I'm getting 10, which is how many rows are visible on my screen, proves the fact that the hidden ones must display zero. So this is brilliant. This means that in any other function, such as a count ifs, I can test it if the include column equals one, Therefore, it's a visible row. So I've just cleared my slicer and let's see this in action. I'm going to start by taking a copy of this slicer so I can put it onto this sheet with a paste where I have a little pre-prepared basic report. This could be a lot more glamorous than this, including charts and spark lines and lots of fun. But for now, a simple report and in cell B6, I've got a little array formula doing a classic sort and unique to bring me the list of all of the unique reasons from TBL refunds. And what I want to know is the total refund amount for each of those reasons, but have it synced with my slicer so that I can filter it by clicking the likes of Manchester and Swindon, etc. And in cell C9, I'm going to use a simple sum ifs function. So to repeat sum ifs natively, will sum hidden rows. But because we've used aggregate here, that is unlocking the door for sum ifs to also be able to work with a slicer and ignore hidden rows. So for the sum range, that is going to be TBL refunds and the refund amount. Then for the criteria range, that will be TBL refunds, the reason column. I'm going to connect this first condition to my reason in the adjacent column, using the hash so that I can sync it with that spill range. So if any additional reasons are included in the future, they're automatically catered for. And here comes the important one, 
well, they're all important, but you know what I mean, which is that I want to use the include column, the one that has our aggregate flag in if it's visible or not. And I want to know that contains a one. Therefore, it is a visible column and we want to use it. So this is some ifs and here we have our answers. And if I click on the options in my slicer, like Belfast, no outstanding refunds here for late deliveries. Well done, Belfast. And if I choose Guildford, we have the results for that location and Swindon again. So now I'm able to use my slicer with a function such as some ifs, many other functions to play with. And this is all thanks to aggregate and the way that I've used it in that table to flag whether it's hidden or not. So that was four different examples of why the Excel pros are using the aggregate function. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please hit the thumbs up and give it a like. And why not subscribe to be kept updated with the latest videos at this channel. Thanks for your time. See you again soon.